Hello, everyone, and welcome to Got Thrones, a Game of Thrones podcast. I'm Alexandra August. I'm Johnny Kolosinski. And welcome back for week three of Game of Thrones Super Fight. Yeah! This is really fun. Yeah, we enjoy Pardon it. us for taking a week off last week. Johnny and I are having lots of life right now. Mm-hmm. I'm moving. I'm a homeowner. Yay! <laughs> Congratulations. That is very far off for me. <laughs> Well, in terms of news, though, since we were off for a week, we have a little bit to talk about. Yeah. Uh, Carice Van Houten released what appears to be a new photo of her in age makeup, though it could just be a photo from last season's initial age makeup. That's there's no confirming. Uh, yeah, that. I don't it, it. There's no real one way or the other to know because um, she didn't say it wasn't a, this is what I did today. It was just, oh, I loved my special effects team. Exactly. And it was a shot of the makeup, which looked amazing. Like, I was looking oh at it for God. a minute. Yeah. I mean, you can see pores in the skin and the pieces that they've added. And you can, they've also found a way to recreate, like, the veins just beneath, the, I, like, blood vessels and veins just beneath the skin that have to be applied. Like, they're clearly not hers. It's I had no idea that it was that much of a practical effect. I thought she was dobied out and it was largely CGI, but it's uh, almost entirely practical. It's yeah. I'm, I'm still kind of blown away. Like I, it reminds me of our conversation with Rashad and Anthony last year at Coliseum. We spoke to two peep to makeup artists who um, won sci-fi's face off or one of them did. I believe, mm-hmm. um, or two contestants on Sci-Fi's Face Off, and wound up having a phenomenal discussion with them about the practical effects and the makeup used on the show. And I believe that's when they told us that the Joffrey effect, with the blood coming out of his nose when he dies at the purple wo- at the purple wedding, that that that, w- that blew my mind that that was practical. Yeah, I was like, how? And very simple too. I guess it's just like mm-hmm. just sponges up your nose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it, it's phenomenal looking. We it's on our Twitter. And uh, I think it made it on our Facebook. Um, but scroll back a bit or check Winner is Coming or uh, Watchers on the Wall because it's it's nifty to look at. Yeah, we'll just tweet it. Yeah. We'll find a way to tweet it now. Um, speaking of our Twitter, you can find this podcast on Twitter at Got Thrones PCAST. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash Got Thrones. It's pretty simple. And we are also home based at Got Thrones.com. So Correct. check out any updates and fun mm-hmm. stuff. And then the other bit of news that basically everyone in their season seven costume showed up for this HBO promo. That's just a bunch of their cast members from different shows going, oh, yeah, to mimic the like the HBO sound when it's like, ah, and then it's HBO. Yep. Um, And it looks everybody looks the Starks look really, really like snappy. Yeah. Um, so everyone looks nice and warm too all the ev- ev- everyone's dressed for the north pretty much with the exception of uh varies and for some reason davos um maybe we... they're just like we're gonna chill in dorn yeah you guys can go someplace else mm-hmm. you guys can go north if you want we are staying in the south clearly which is the smartest decision aria is definitely the winner with her battle scream it's pretty great, um, and she's got neat all. She kind of looks like Jon Snow, to be perfectly honest with you. <laughs> like, that leather jerkin is, or whatever it's called, that yeah. leather jacket that she's wearing. I think it's a jerkin. And she's got this, like, cool off-the-shoulder, like, fur cape. I don't know, she just looks a lot like him. Yeah. In that. Maybe we'll see her in whatever the lady version of a man bun is. I mean, God, her hair even looks like his, too. Right? Shoot. That's really funny. I think the lady version of a man bun is a bun. I, I that, that, that's the joke, yes. Oh, okay. Um, and then Daenerys is clearly is back in like it's and she kind of looks like Cersei just in terms of what she's wearing, which mm-hmm. is going to be fun. She's got um, definitely more Westerosi clothing, yep. which makes me sad because I kind of wanted her to just overtake Westeros Dothraki'd out. Yeah. <laughs> like on Wednesdays, we wear leather. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also like that in the pictures, it's less so when you're watching the video. Jamie looks like he's about to eat his hand. He look, yeah, the pictures, he just looks horrified by it, which is mm-hmm. kind of funny. So Jamie's in regular clothing. Cersei's in the clothing that we saw them in in season six. Everyone else appears to just be... The Starks just look like times are good. Yep. 
the Starts starts looks warm. Um, Yeah. And Tyrion's wearing a sofa. Tyrion is wearing a a nice sofa. Uh, It's a very tasteful blue pinstripe sofa. Mm -hmm. And is also wearing a Sand of the Queen badge. So not a whole lot of new information to be sucked from the marrow of these stupid promos. But... I'm just liking the fact that given all the information we have, it looks like the Starks are finally regrouping and becoming the force to be reckoned with that they always were. Um, But this time in the hands of the kids, which Mm -hmm. is, I know, I think we all telegraphed that that was going to happen, like, or else this is, I don't know know why I'm still watching, but it's nice to see them sort of almost look as though they're gearing up for battle or like a really nice family picture. Somebody who's not in it that I just noticed, that I didn't notice watching it, but I'm noticing looking at all the pictures side by side, Littlefinger. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Someone who is in it, and I think the it's hound. just... Yeah, the Hound is in it. Um, but uh, Hodor was also in it. I saw that too. But that I think that was just a head fake. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him again, um, uh, transformed into a white, but... That would be super sad. I know. I mean, sad for other people. I am still, my heart is still made of stone and I'm still not like <laughs> fantastically moved by that death scene. <laughs> I'm probably going to get more hate mail for that. But I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, audience. It just doesn't, I've never been that interested or excited about Hodor. Um, great guy. Lovely man, I'm sure. But. Got <laughs> uh, anyway. podcast at gmail.com, folks. Got Thrones podcast at gmail.com. Tell us what you think, or if you were like one of the other five people in the world who were like, meh, at the hold the door scene. <laughs> I just had a really hard time understanding what exactly was happening. And then, so that's what I was, that's where my brain power was going instead of. Instead of like, into oh, tears. Like, yeah, instead of tears. It was like, wow, how does, what? So did Bran in the, f- I'm so confused. Bran is in it and he's actually doing his little eye thing. Yeah. the promo. I hope he has something interesting to do. He's he's, he's he's got one job, and it's to tell Jon Snow that he's Jon Targaryen. Yeah, with exactly zero evidence to back this up. It, listen, I was hanging out at his tree, and... Um, in this tree. Yeah. Touch the tree, dude. Mm-hmm. Oh, you can't. Oh, it's just me. This is, it's, I, I feel like this is very closely akin to how Mormonism got started. <laughs> got Thrones Podcast at gmail.com. Right, I think we can now get into our yeah. gameplay... So if you are not familiar with Super Fight listeners, if this is your first time listening to this kind of content, basically Super Fight is a game similar to Cards Against Humanity, is apples to apples card game, where you pick a character out of a deck and then you pick two attributes for that character. Somebody else on your team or an opposite team does the same. So you have now Mr. Rogers. Who can't stop clapping. And is made of paper against a boy band, 10 stories tall, but have, they have tiny T-Rex arms. And you make them fight. It's really fun. Mm-hmm. It is a game of ridiculous arguments, as it says right on the box. And instead of using their characters, obviously, it, would, it wouldn't be very good Thrones content if we did, we are using Game of Thrones characters. That and, is it. Yep. And this week, our matchup is Olena Tyrell, Queen of Thorns, against Mother of Dragons, Daenerys Targaryen. <laughs> Lady Olena can dig and run through tunnels with super speed and she has a venomous bite which danny i'm pretty sure that olana tyrell in actuality has a venomous bite i know this feels like i feel like this isn't a huge stretch for her the (laughs) digging thing maybe but i mean she's growing strong Mm -hmm. danny do you want to introduce danny uh you go ahead and introduce danny all right danny is wearing a flaming tutu and is armed with a shrink ray, which it's just really, really badass to me. In my head, she's like wearing this tutu. She's super pissed. And obviously the flames aren't hurting her. And because she's Ooh, that does fit. yeah. And she's got this like bazooka type thing over her shoulder. That's a shrink ray. I'm picturing tank girl. Oh, I like that. See, now she's definitely in Dothraki stuff. Oh, yeah. Or is she naked? Yeah, I think she's in. Well, no, she's wearing a flaming tutu. Well, yeah, but I don't think she can wear anything else but the flaming tutu, because the flaming tutu will burn the clothing. That's that's a, a very good point. That's logic you can take to the bank, my it friend. It is. Um, all right, so we need to, so at this point, we pick an environment. Part of me says Highgarden, but we haven't really seen Highgarden. 
No, we haven't, though we are going to in season seven. Oh, really? Yes. I'm 99% certain about that. Why? It just makes sense. Um, I can't give you any more information about that and not spoil the shit out of you. But, okay. Um, it's like everyone who lives there is dead. On everyone. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Well, Lady Olenna is still alive. So. Oh, right. Yeah. I don't know. I'm okay. just really excited to see that big fancy house. It is going to be so exciting. I bet it's going to be so pretty. It's going to be gay as the day is long because Laura's probably decorated it. And I <laughs> just don't have enough good things to say about Highgarden and I haven't even seen it yet. That's got amazing reviews on TripAdvisor. Uh, Laura's would have the best Airbnb. Oh my god, that shit would be magical if it's anything like his hair. Right? My goodness. And he's out of town because he's busy being getting flack for being an Iron Fist and also he's dead. <laughs> he just, he's, you know, he spends half the year in King's Landing, half the year in High Garden. Yeah. Like most government officials. Mm-hmm. So... We've got Danny and Olena. I don't love the idea of actually doing it at High Garden, just because I feel like that Olena would ruin her house if she tried to like dig underground and stuff like that. Okay. So I kind of i I was thinking actually the Riverlands. Okay. Like in the woods somewhere. Like uh, where the BWB hangs out. Brotherhood without banners. Yeah, that's kind of for some reason that's in my head. Okay. Does that sound good? That sounds good. Alrighty. So we've got. Elena, who can dig and run through tunnels with super speed and a venomous bite. Danny, armed with a shrink ray and wearing a flaming tutu in the middle of the woods. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's going to be some polite chatter before this battle begins. Yeah. Ve- like, these are gentle ladies. Yeah, there's, there's going to be veiled threats over cheese. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, definitely over cheese. <laughs> Elena doesn't go anywhere without her cheese boy. Yeah. Um, cheese boy. I don't know who gets the initial advantage. Because for once, Elena has the mobility, but Danny's going to sh- set shit on, fi- shit on fire. I think the opening gambit is for Elena to sort of, to finish the last bite of cheese, down the last for wine, give Danny a wink and a smile, and immediately burrow Dive. on the ground. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Just like, boom. And she she can dig like Toadstool could dig in Super Mario Brothers too. Yeah. It's... She's real fast. Yeah. Um... Danny's like, I feel like Danny's a little bit like, oh, shit. Um... And then I, I think at this point she activates the tutu, so she stands up, lights herself on fire, like strips down, and mm-hmm. lights herself on it fire. It does the Wonder Woman spin. Yes. <laughs> With her waist on fire. <laughs> <laughs> bom, 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 bom. Um. <laughs> and then I think it's just a look. I think she can hear Olena. Yeah. And it, she can maybe feel her a little it, bit. You see the rumble of the wine on the table, like in Jurassic Park? Yeah, just like that. But it's not a big, like, doom. It's no, it's just it... a, like, yes. Yes. Very much so. So at this point, she's, and I think, yeah, I mean, I think at this point, she's definitely got the the advantage. So I think her plan is just to come up out of the ground and knock Danny off her feet mm-hmm. so she can bite her. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of curious, what kind of, ven- like, how venomous do you think this bite is? Yeah. I think it's one bite death. I don't know if it's instantaneous, so there it could end up in a draw. But maybe very slow. Like one bite is enough to kill you. Yeah, but, but it takes a while, and yeah, you have to basically exactly. like there's a ready there's a there's an antidote, but you have to go get it. Right. Like it's not this is curable, but it's going to take some effort. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think that's her plan is just to, and I would assume Danny's Danny's main strategy is just to like get eyes on her, and shrink rare mm-hmm. and then put her in a gilded cage which it wouldn't be the worst for elena i mean I she mean, enjoys it's... her agency but <laughs> i think elena would be very very angry at the mother of dragons touting her around in a golden cage <laughs> like do you like my new pet <laughs> and then you know two episodes into the season she gets kidnapped and we have the rest of season seven as danny going around where is my olena <laughs> and she travels she travels westeros far and wide mm-hmm. looking for her and eventually she finds her and she turns her back normal size and they get married yeah danny's finally found a partner yeah this is another case i feel like where where like they would be friends mm-hmm. they're kind of having fun with this and olena probably feels you know a bit maternal towards her. yeah Which, speaking of i really hope we get a scene between them i'm sure we will yeah but... i'm so I don't think that the shrink ray is that much of an advantage to Danny. 
Well, because I'm, I'm, I'm thinking at this point, let's say Olena is burrowing underground. Mm-hmm. She has to know where Danny is, and I'm going to say that she does. Yeah. And I think the problem with that is she can get really close to Danny, and Danny, I, you can't, like, you need some range to use the shrink ray. And, and even if she does hit her with the shrink ray, that just makes her harder to deal with. Because she's still poisonous, venomous. This is true. Okay, so let's 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 unpack this a little bit mm-hmm. and sort of you know take it out for a spin. So, Olena is burrowing around underground very mm-hmm. quickly and swiftly, knowing where Danny is, and Danny's kind of trying to jump around, and Olena does make the first move and knock Danny off her feet. But before she can actually bite her, I'm thinking that tutu does come into play. Yeah, it, it's either gonna scare her off, or injure her in some way oh yeah because obviously she didn't know about the tutu yeah she did not know about it the last she checked danny was sitting nice as you please in front of a cheese table wearing some you know lovely leather and Mm -hmm. then now she's naked and on fire so there's definitely a wow factor to this outfit but even if she does get her with the shrink ray it just makes her harder to deal with true true so lena and easier to avoid the tutu in a bite situation this is true so i think maybe danny Ooh. okay so i think at this point what we're telegraphing is that olena probably wins this first round yeah unless danny uses the shrink ray on herself oh twist twist so if danny uses the shrink ray on herself she's still basically like i feel like the only advantage to that would be like she just can set olena on fire she can set olena on fire or set the woods on fire but olena can just burrow and yeah, pretty much thinking, take care of the fire. It's, she would just, well, that would be a retreat, though. hmm I think. I think that we're in a situation where it's, it's either going to be they both retreat or they talk it out. Yeah, I think this is, I think we're at the point where we can, I like the idea of them talking it out. I think, but I think this goes on for a minute. Like, mm-hmm. I think Olena burrows, and, like, occasionally she runs into some tree roots, and it's very cartoony for at least a little while, because that image makes me... Yeah, it, it, it's, it's Bugs Bunny pop, popping up. This is very Bugs Bunny. This is, like, Bugs Bunny and Elmer Fudd, if Elmer mm-hmm. Fudd was, you know, a little bit smarter. And Bugs Bunny was a little bit closer to the worms from Dune. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. So, I think we could probably draw... Yeah, let's see if anything changes this up. But otherwise, I'm going to say it's either it's a pretty strong draw. I think they yeah, I think they stop fighting at a certain point and just like go back and have tea. Okay, so we're drawing new attributes. Danny has an invisibility cloak. Not, Lady Olena, what? The invisibility cloak not super helpful. Since Olena's um, spending all her time underground. I don't know. No, no, no. Danny has Danny has an invisibility. Cloak. Yeah, but. Olena's not really relying on sight. But Olena throws bears. Oh. Okay. (laughs) I could see this happening. All right. None of this doesn't fit. Really? My my mental picture. I I, I could see her having, like, a bag of bears. Yeah. Like, they're a surprise, too. Like, all of Mm -hmm. a sudden, she gets underground. Danny's like, what the fuck? Arms herself at the tutu. Uh Uh-huh. Gets her invisibility cloak handy, because she can't use both at the same time, obviously. Because flammables. Exactly. And Olena, like, bumps up, knocks her on her feet, and then I think just throws bears for fun. Yeah. Like, this is how Olena works out. It turns out the bear, the bear, the maiden fair is all about Olena and her big honking bag of bears. Yes. (laughs) Olena Bag of Bears Tyrell. (laughs) That was her wrestling name. (laughs) All right, I'm gonna go. I can with... just imagine her like her like munching on the cheese, and then with one hand lift like doing bicep curls with a bear. With a bear. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to give this to Olena for sheer awesomeness. Yeah, she she's just the one who controls the scenario. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I think if Danny had her dragons, obviously it would be a different story. But that's why Danny doesn't have her dragons because it'd be a different story and and one that we've already seen. Yeah. It's a great story. I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm a big fan of Battle of the Bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Probably seen it upwards of 50 times. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, I think Ol- Olena, take- Olena takes this one home. She takes her bears and she goes home. Yep. And Occasionally she performs circus tricks for children. But I don't think that it's a battle to the death. No, 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 not at all. I think... Um, I think it's the same time next week. 
Yeah, same sort of thing. scenario. Yeah, this is actually, I think this is a super fight that just turned into, like, super scrimmage. Mm-hmm. They just realized that they really like each other. Yeah, I think they went out and got drinks after this. Yeah. And Danny started, like, learning how to play with the bears, and she just finds that she likes all kinds of big, deadly animals, and she has, an affi- she has like, an affinity with them, so she's really got away with it. She's considering being a vet now. <laughs> yeah. And her letter's just like, Marjorie, who? <laughs> Yeah, this is this is the granddaughter she always wanted, even though she had the granddaughter she always wanted in Loras. Exactly. <laughs> she really did hit the jackpot with grandkids. She did. I mean, and Mace isn't bad. She did not hit the jackpot with her own children. It yeah. skipped a generation. The Olena skipped a generation. It's like twins. I think on that note, we can close this one out. Yeah, I think so. So victory uh, to victory to Lady Olena and mm-hmm. uh, much partying afterwards. Yeah. Victory and brunch. Victory and brunch. God, the Tyrells really do brunch well. Living the dream. Living the dream, folks. And with that, we will see you next Monday Mm -hmm. with another edition of Game of Thrones Superfight.